Hi, my name's Peach and I'm a horticultural therapist and I'll be leading you on some garden discovery walks in the next year. This first one that we'll be doing is in the Arboretum and the area that is very woodsy but also opens up to what's called the Winter Garden where they have intentionally planted plants that bloom early and have amazing scent and texture and interest for this time of year when most everything except for maybe rhododendrons like the one behind me will have lost their leaves and the trees will look fairly barren. Let's get started. I'm here in the Arboretum in what's called the Winter Garden and you can see that they have left a lot of leaves in the garden beds to keep the weeds from growing over winter. Right now, it's looking definitely like a winter garden. Things are beginning to bloom and I'll show you some of those things. This table sits waiting for someone to come and enjoy it. Maybe have a picnic after walking the trails here in the Arboretum. If we sit quiet, we can watch for birds that might come join us. You can see the trails cut in and out of these trees. My friend Patricia is here and she is has found a fragrant Daphne, Daphne Odora I would assume. And the trail continues on to the south here. There's a several witch hazel shrubs or little trees that are blooming. You can kind of see the buds there in the distance, the red and yellow. And the buds come on before the foliage, so it really adds a lot of color to the winter garden. See her there. And the trail winds around. It's like it goes off to the left here. So maybe we'll take a little walk in that direction and see what we can find. Amazing thing about a winter garden is that it has a lot of scent. I recommend that you come here and walk these trails yourself and see and smell the Daphne, which has been allowed to grow very large here in this forest. Apparently it doesn't need super lot of sunshine, although the light is filtering through the trees. This is one of the first bloomers. Amelia is blooming here. So nice, delicate white buds on an evergreen plant. And so welcome on these gray days to see a bright white flower. And then above your head, oh my goodness, more of this witch hazel that has just an incredibly sweet scent. The ground underfoot is covered with needles that have fallen from these trees, making it a good place for squirrels and birds to look for food and also for little plants to come up, holding moisture and making a beautiful, soft, quiet sound here in the forest. That cedar tree has lichen on this side.
It's just a little secret trail going up here, up the hill, and you can see more of this lovely color. And above Patricia's head, Mahonia, yellow flowers blooming. All of these plants attracting pollinators that might come out on a warm day. Oregon grape, also known as Mahonia, is native to our climate here in the Pacific Northwest. It's a yellow flower in the distance and in the foreground you see more of this witch hazel, which is several trees. In the park you can hear dogs and people. Everyone's out because it's a beautiful winter day. More camellias. Really smells good. Here we found the sarcococca and it has just these little delicate white flowers that are barely visible, but berries left from winter and feeding the birds. This beautiful green foliage just below your feet too with that epimedium. The flowers will be coming out in the spring, just delicate little yellow flowers that come up and then the foliage comes after. It's just a little secret trail going up here, up the hill and you can see more of this lovely color. And above Patricia's head, Mahonia, yellow flowers blooming. All of these plants attracting pollinators that might come out on a warm day. Another witch hazel. The blossoms on this one are dark. And it's like the buds are just beginning to open. This Stewardia tree. Stewardia monadelpha. It says Japanese Stewardia. And in the wintertime, no leaves, but look at that outstanding bark. The scent here is sweet and gentle, spicy. Last year's leaves hang. Giving this kind of a gingerbread look and smell. Bottom of it. What's underneath? It's so beautiful. It's really nice, the color contrast. I mean, it just gives you so much peace, you know? It just would calm a person down so much just to see the beauty. So much peace. Since we are all the same anyway, 
they're they're me and I'm them. So if we could just see that beauty inside of ourselves, maybe we could look so pretty, you know. <laughs> Here we have some berries on a crab apple that are holding on from fall and feeding the birds. This tree looks old because of its moss and its height and its spread. It looks like it's been here a long time and allowed to just inhabit this space. Today, our craft that, that accompanies the winter garden study is a watercolor, and I have directions for you on how to do this, but this is my version of what I had seen in the garden, just recognizing all of that amazing color and then the texture of the bark on these birch trees. This is a very simple project and I will give you some instructions. And then just playing around with this same idea with watercolor. This is another, another picture that I had done. And it shows you the technique in greater detail. What you can see here is a lot of the salt on the watercolor has drawn the paint and the water and created a look like maybe even snow or frost. So let's get going. So it's a very simple project we're going to do today and I wanted to use materials that you could find easily um, at your drugstore perhaps or um, Fred Meyer someplace that carries kids um, craft supplies and so what I'm using here is just a basic watercolor kit that has a variety of colors and it comes with its own paintbrush although I am also using a larger paintbrush because I like broad strokes and if you don't have that you could also use just cut up an old kitchen sponge this one has some abrasive material on one side and softer material on another. So it'd be kind of fun to just play around with some textures with that as well. And the paper that you could use would be, um, it's possible to use just basically what we have is um, a sketch pad, inexpensive uh, blank paper. 
If you have access to some watercolor paper and want to use that, you're welcome to. And then the last thing is this blue tape that you see I've taped onto my page. This is called painter's tape. And what's really nice about it, it's like a masking tape, but the difference is that it comes off really easily without tearing the paper. So I'm using it in order to create what's called a resist. And I'll show you how that works. The resist is the area on the paper where I have kept it white. So you can see where I have created these birch trees and I've painted right over the top of that tape. And then when it was dry, I pulled the tape off and then I drew with a pen to just create some texture to make it look like bark on these birch trees. So I'll show you a couple of examples and you're welcome to do it any way you want. You can leave out the trees or, and just do flowers if you want. This one has a more traditional kind of a tree shape and I've put a moon in the background. So I've actually painted my tree in and then outlined it with, with a Sharpie, black Sharpie pen to give this tree some texture. And then I'll go back in and I'll fill in these areas with some watercolors and see what happens with that. Another example I have here to show you is one similar to the last one, but a combination of the two. I wanted you to see what it's like when I pull the tape off. You can see the tape comes off easily. I have these white areas and, oops, gently getting started so that I'm not tearing the paper. I'm just pulling it down and there I have two birch trees in the front of this painting and I can go back with my pen and draw into there any way I wanted to. Alternatively, you could draw your, your tree on afterwards if you wanted to just use a Sharpie pen and create kind of a dark tree outline as well. Because so much of what we're seeing with the trees right now is that they haven't leafed out. They may be starting to show their buds, as you recall, but they are also, um, just we're seeing their beautiful bark and the textures that are on there. So that's kind of fun to play around with. So to get started, you wanna put your tape on your paper. And then if you like, tape your paper down. I'm just using my kitchen countertop, but um, it's possible to also put like a piece of cardboard or some newspaper underneath it so that you have a nice workspace. And then when your paint goes over the edges, you don't have to stop at the edge. You can go all the way over. Um, the beauty with watercolor paints is that they actually do wash out of our clothing and protect the things um, around our homes. If it's a kid's product, you can not worry about its toxicity um, or its um, stainability factors. So, Let's get started a little bit with our paint. I wanted to show you again another one that I did. And what I've done here is once the paint is on and it's still wet, I've sprinkled salt. And you can just use ordinary table salt or I have this pink Himalayan salt in a, um, a salt grinder, but it just any kind of salt that you have on hand and you just sprinkle it over the paint and it actually creates this kind of a sparkly look that makes it seem like maybe this Sky is kind of full of some snowflakes. Um, and at the same time here, I have this green grass underneath. So we have this combination of factors. And then I've also put my resist in there for these trees. So starting back with your plain paper, your paints, your paintbrush, your sponges, and some water in a jar. My paintbrush is wet. What I need to do first is to get my paints kind of wet. So I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna squeeze a little water from the sponge right onto the paints. And we want them wet but not dripping wet. What happens with them if they sit for a minute is that the paints actually will start to soften up and we'll get darker color with them than we would if we were just starting out with somewhat dry paint. It's fun to play around with dry paint too, so it's really up to you how you wanna do this. but. So I'm just gonna start dipping my brush in this and painting some paint on here and seeing what I can come up with. And just one other thought, some people like to get their paper a little bit wet. So I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna take my sponge, I'm gonna just wipe my paper down a little bit cause that'll help the paint to just go on a little bit more smoothly. So I'm thinking about a blue sky 
And I'm just gonna be abstract. What kind of a sky do, do I want? What kind of a sky do you want? When the sun is setting, we see a lot of amazing colors. So I'm gonna add some of those in here. I love seeing purple in the sky. I love seeing the sky still being blue in parts, but maybe what's turning color is the, the edges of the clouds. So we have clouds here. You can leave white space if you want to and just define the clouds. Um, it's really, it's your painting. You do what you want with it. I think it, it's fun to also create a bit of a, what we call a horizon line. So I'm just gonna say, okay, I'm painting green here to just say that is the grass or maybe that's foliage. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'll put some, I'll, I won't make it so straight. I'll just do kind of a, again, somewhat of an abstract. Let's think about that winter garden and what did we see when we were on our walk and how beautiful it can be to just be abstract, add colors as you see them fit, Maybe even think about some of those yellows and oranges that were starting to come out um, in the trees. It was so fun to see that. I just love this time of year when things start to bloom. We're starting to see the bulbs coming up and the ground and um, a lot of those scented plants that I showed you. So here we go. Here's a little bit. Let's just say that orange could be what? It could be the treetops, it could be flower tops in some of those trees, or it could be some leaves that are still hanging on, or it could even be the sun, sun setting behind all of this. So I'm gonna wash the sky a little bit with some of that, a lighter orange, just to give it a bit of a glow. Softens it up a little bit. Adds some color in there. See where I'm going with this? And you see, I still have my tape on there. Maybe I should switch sides and do a little bit of color on that. Make sure that I have some continuity because whatever's going on behind the tree may be the same on both sides. Some of you might be familiar with this idea of complementary colors. So yellow and purple look really great together because they're opposite on the color wheel. And I like to see reds and greens kind of being in the same area with each other. It plays around and makes your eye jump around on the page a bit. We'll just kind of spread this in here. Know that when the sun is setting in the sky or things are growing, it's never really um, perfect in the sense of like where we want to put things. It's These things just happen. It's like a it's always something very abstract. So here you go. That's mine for now. I think I might stop. I think I might just add a tad bit of red in there just to kind of balance out the painting a little bit. Maybe you just pretend that that's some flowers blooming on top of some of these trees and or again the sun is just creating some glow here. And there you have it. So I'm gonna let this dry for a few hours and, or maybe overnight, and then I'll take this tape off and I'll start drying on that area. So I'm gonna go back to this one that's already dry, or maybe even, yeah, this one. But I have one here where it's dry and I have this area of resist. So I'll go back in here and I'll just draw again with my Sharpie pen and if you feel like doing something fun in the end, just you know, adding some more color in here, thinking about things blooming in the sky, or in the garden rather, sun shining up on, on this. Maybe we've got some sunset going on behind this tree. I'll add some color in there. It brightens it up a little bit. That could even be like spring flowers starting to come on. What do you think? It's really just whatever we want it to be. So there we go. And I'm gonna invite you to have fun with that. And I guess the one step that I forgot to show you was what to do with the salt. Because remember I told you to do it while it's still wet. So this painting is still wet. 
I'm going to take my salt shaker and I'm going to grind, grind, grind and put some salt on top of it and then I'm just going to let it sit and dry and that salt is going to pull some of the water out of the paper and out of that paint as it dries and what we're going to end up seeing is an interesting bit of kind of almost a winter landscape. 